He comes from Groupon. Okay. Uh, he's going to talk us about Node.js, uh, how to share code, code between Node.js and the browser. Uh, am I right? Yep, that's exactly okay, right. Okay, so Keith. All right. KTAL Madrid, how's it going? Uh, I want to thank Enrique and the conference organizers. It's been an awesome conference. Super happy to be here. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, the pipe dream of sharing code between Node.js and the browser. Um, so just so we're clear on what I mean by pipe dream. Uh, so pipe dream is kind of like a holy grail. Uh, it's kind of something that it would be sweet if we had, but people don't think it's actually a, a reality. Uh, so uh, I work at Groupon as a front-end engineer. Um, if you're not familiar with Groupon, uh, we kind of provide cool stuff for you to do in your city and give you a discount on it uh, to make life less boring. That's sort of our mission. Um, so uh, we're sort of in the process of rewriting our front end at Groupon. Uh, so what we wanted to do is basically go from a huge Rails app to a backbone client side app uh, that's driven off of the API. Uh, so we started building this app. And the first problem we thought of is when you build a client side app, you don't get any SEO support. Uh, so we knew this would be a huge problem. We, we couldn't completely be invisible to Google. Um, so we started thinking about how to solve this problem. And being front end engineers, we still wanted to use Backbone. We still wanted to build it as a client side app. So I kind of proposed this idea to the team. Uh, so could we write a Backbone app in a way that we could just transparently run it on Node.js and you could get this exact same output from the server as you do on the browser? Uh, and it really felt like it, it, it should be possible, it, and it felt like it shouldn't be that hard. So we started digging into it. Uh, we kind of broke down how we should go about this. Uh, let me show you where, where we're at with it. All right, uh, so this is sort of a group on app, so this is just running locally on my computer, hitting the local API, so these aren't actual deals. But uh, so you can kind of see as I, as I navigate through the pages, it's kind of doing a fade in, fade out, so these are rendering on the client. And then I'm gonna switch over to Chrome Canary. So I have JavaScript disabled on Canary. Um, so I'm going to hit the same URL again. And everything still works. Um, so this is a Backbone app. Uh, it's running the exact same code on Node. Um, there's no code duplication. It's just the exact same code. Um, so <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we started this project about four months ago. It was in January or February. Um, and we were working on it for about two weeks. And we had a very simple prototype that was working. So we were getting a lot of validation with the idea. We really felt like it was going to work. Uh, and then there happened to be a podcast. I don't know if, if you guys listen to JS Jabber. Um, but there was a podcast. Uh, with uh, Jeremy Ashkenaz and Yehuda Katz. And the topic of, uh, you know, sort of this pipe dream came up. Uh, so I'm going to play these audio clips for you. Um, but to set the scene, uh, somebody brought up the idea of using mustache templates and how that's valuable because you can render the same template on, on the client and on the server. Um, and then Jeremy kind of brought up the point that handlebars isn't as easy to render on the server as mustache because handlebars is a little bit more complicated. Uh, you have more helper methods that you'd have to duplicate. Um, so, let's see if this works. Or whatever. Again, I think the entire the node is awesome because did you know if you write in JavaScript, you write the same code on the client and server? And if you use mustache, you use the same template. I, like, I think the entire thing is a pipe dream. People are missing the, the context of what a client side app and a server side app is and thinking about it very superficially. So, the end result is you imagine that something is cool. By now, shouldn't node have done something cool? Like, shouldn't there be a demo of something really awesome happening? I think the fact is that there's just a totally different context for what you're doing on the server than the client. Okay. 
so then Jeremy later had a response that was a slightly different take on it. So I'll play that. I'm, I'm going to. For, for the bring... record, I'm still a, I'm still a believer in this uh, in this pipe dream, and I don't think I don't think that Node is necessarily there yet in terms of library support for doing everything that you needed to do on the server side. But I do think that there is, especially for you know for JavaScript web applications, um, value in being able to have the same code run on the client and the server, even even if it's still not really even if we haven't really reached that point yet. So since we heard that the project at Groupon has been known as Pipe Dream. Uh, so that's that's what we refer to it as. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about when we first started it, how, how we thought about this project. Um, it was pretty simple. Uh, we kind of just met with a couple of other developers on the team and we laid out some core design principles and just kind of rules that we wanted to follow. Uh, these are kind of the rules. So we wanted to use Backbone. We already had a couple of Backbone apps running in production. We all know it. We love it. It's cool. Um, so we're going to use a Backbone router. And then on the server, we're going to use Express. So Backbone will just act as a facade and delegate to an instance of Express. Uh, we'll only support gets on the client. Posts and puts, et cetera, will fall through to the server, um, just like a typical client side app would, would handle it. Um, to handle data models, um, so you typically call fetch on a Backbone model or collection. That would make an AJAX request. On the server, we're going to use that exact same API. Uh, except we're going to override backbone.sync, and that's going to use the node request module instead. Um, views uh, are a bit of a harder case. Um, the solution we came up with was views will implement a two HTML method. So on the server, we don't want to just say view render yourself and have it try to do DOM manipulation. We want to say view, give me your HTML. So that's just a convention we chose to adhere by. Um, and then lastly, we wanted the server-side support to just happen, just be transparent. We, we want app developers to focus on writing app code. So we never wanted to have code that said, oh, if you're on the server, do this. If you're on the client, do this. We wanted to just keep that out of it. So what I'm going to do is take the simplest backbone app that I came up with, and we're going to go through the process of getting this running on, on the client and the server. So I'm going to walk through it. We're going to do some live coding. Hopefully it works. Um, so here's the simplest Backbone app. Uh, it has one URL. When you hit the root URL, it renders the root method. And it has one view. And then it has some init code. And I'll show you what that does. OK. So that's. That's what it does. So there's our there's our backbone app so far. So you can you can see it's got a uh, couple links. Uh, this doesn't currently do anything except pushes the about state, um, and then it renders the view uh, on the client side. It's huge. Okay. So when we started thinking about how do we get this code onto the server. So we kind of broke it down into parts and thought about what's the analogy. So we, we write code like this on the client. Um, so we're creating a backbone router. It has a URL. On the server, we would use Express. So app.get uh, with the URL and a callback. This is pretty analogous. So we've got a route and a callback. We've got a route and a callback. All we have to do is make this uh, you know, delegate to this. Um, View rendering uh, is, is pretty analogous also. So on the client, we're instantiating a backbone view, and then we're calling its render method. On the server, uh, we're kind of doing the same thing, except we're trying to send down the HTML that the view would generate. And then we've got this response object uh, that uh, express callbacks receive as a parameter. Um, that knows how to send HTML down to the browser. Uh, so this is a little bit of a different context, so we have to deal with this difference. We have to abstract this away so we can write the same code on the client and the server. Um, so when we're thinking about how do, how do we abstract this, like what's the right abstraction uh, for view rendering? So we went back to Rails. We're all Rails developers at Groupon. Um, I don't want to start any flame wars about it. I think Rails got a lot of things right. I think 
uh, some of the APIs that Rails has are pretty elegant. Uh, particularly, I like having a render method available in controllers that just kind of takes a template and knows how to render a template. So thinking about how we pull that into a Backbone app, uh, this is kind of what we came up with. So if, it can, if a router implements a render method that takes a view, then we could abstract that render method and make it do different things on the client and the server. So I'll show you what that looks like. So on the client, uh, this is the implementation of the render method. Let's see, let's see that. So just takes a view and calls the render method, and then we're using it in the controller here. Um, and then when we take this code to the server, I'm basically going to copy and paste all this into the server implementation. I'm going to go through kind of these steps. Uh, so this is kind of all it's going to take to get basically that client code to render on the server in, in this state. Um, so we're going to include express. Uh, we're going to override backbone.router.prototype.route to delegate out to express. So this is where we'll get the response object into the controller or router callback. And then we're just going to pass along the query values to the callback. So this is kind of how Backbone handles it. So we're keeping that API consistent. And we're going to implement the render method. So on, on the server, it's going to call this.response.send view.toHTML. And then we have to just make Backbone not try to do any DOM manipulation on the server. So we have to override set element. And then lastly, our init code just becomes this. So if all of that went right, I should be able to boot up this. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Bear with me. Let's turn that off. View has no method to HTML, so we didn't implement that. So we'll just implement the HTML method, which is going to return the template, and then render, we'll just use that to HTML method. Okay, so we get that view, um, and that's the only route that we support right now. So Right now we're in a state where we have a similar Backbone app that runs on the server and a similar one that runs on the client, but they're, they're, two, they're two different uh, programs right now. So what we need to do is we need to take uh, one of them and uh, you know just kind of unify them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the node implementation and we're going to package it and just send it to the client. Uh, and there happens to be a great way to do this. Uh, there's a tool called Browserify that we're going to use to do this. Um, so I'm going to go to another example. We'll kind of walk through what bra how Browserify works. Uh, so if you kind of take this example, say you have this application in Node. So you're requiring the async module. The, the async module is a module that helps you uh, with control flow. So you can, you can do 
async requests in parallel. You can do them in, in series. Uh, it helps you clean up callbacks. Uh, and it happens to also work on the client, so it's really useful for doing AJAX. So you, you might want to pull this module into the client anyway. So this would be a good use of Browserify, uh, even outside of this Pipedream style app. So here's how this works. Uh, you've got your app that's just calling require async. Uh, Browserify packages a uh, command line uh, tool that you just run. You point it at what file you want to Browserify, and then the file that you want to output. Uh, and here's what it'll output. So it kind of gives you the, the common JS style module system that Node implements in the browser. And the cool thing about it is that it's completely compatible with the Node and NPM style require paths. So for instance, the async module has a package.json that specifies what file it should load when it's required and Browserify respects that. So it loads in the package.json, sees that it should load in index, then it loads in index, then index loads in lib async, and then it loads in lib async. Um, so Browserify is going to make packaging this code up really easy. It's really cool. Um, besides the, the respecting NPM file paths, uh, it also handles infinitely nested require statements. So if lib async required more code and that code required more code, it would dig through all of those requires and, and pull up all of the libraries and, and handle dependency resolution. Uh, it has a file watcher, so when you start it up, you can actually just make it watch for changes and it will automatically regenerate the browserified file and it automatically supports CoffeeScript, um, so it's really cool. Um, so we're going to take our node code and we're just going to browserify it uh, so we can send it down to the client. So. so I'm going to run this. It's actually going to fail, um, but that's intentional. So it's trying to load in the Express library, and uh, Express isn't compatible with Browserify. It has some require statements that Browserify kind of chokes on. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is that now in our server-side Backbone app, we're doing things that should only be done on the server. So what we actually need to do is we need to separate out the stuff that's server-specific and just kind of get that out of the file. We need to, we need to make our application clean uh, so that it just represents our app code and not, not server stuff and not client stuff. So, show you what we're going to do there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to break our rule of, of not referencing on client or on server, and we're going to break that just to load in client or server overrides for Backbone. So if process.browser, so if you're on the browser, we're going to load in backbone.client. Else we're going to load in backbone.server. And so these are files that I've created already. So Backbone Server is pretty much just a copy-paste from what we used to have in our server file. And Backbone.Client is kind of analogous to that for the client. Let's see. Now we'll try to browserify it again. Okay, so it's still requiring Express. And that's because it's still requiring backbone.server, which requires Express. So we have to tell Browserify to just ignore that file. And ignore backbone server. Right? Oh wait, I'm browserifying the wrong file. Okay. So it worked. Um, so I'm going to try booting this up now. App is not defined. Okay. All right. 
Let's see if this loads up. All right, so there's our page rendered from Node. Um, now the real test is to see if it'll render on the client. Okay, so there's the about and home. No, nope, getting error. require a backbone, so we're going to see if it'll render on the client. Oh, yep. Thank you. So it's about, let's go home. Okay. Hmm? What'd I do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. So I'll make this bigger so you can see it. Uh, so backbone.history.navigate. So we're on the home page. So I'm going to try and navigate to the about page. Okay. So it so re rendered onto the about page. Uh, so there's the home page. That works. Um, then we'll jump back over the browser that has JavaScript disabled. Um, everything should still work. Um, so you can hit the home page, you can hit the about page. Um, so that still works. Cool. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is uh, on purpose a pretty trivial app. It just renders static views. Um, but so let's just test adding a data model. Um, like I said, this is this is pretty easy to do too. Um, all we're going to do is override backbone.sync on the server, and everything else should just kind of work. Um, so So what I'm doing here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in uh, tweets that have the Spain.js hashtag. Uh, then I updated the view template to just render out those tweets. And the router callback here uh, is just instantiating that tweets collection, calling fetch waiting for success and then rendering the view. Um, so just standard backbone. So. Might take a minute because of the internet. Okay. So there's that. Um, so we'll try the client again. Ah. <laughs> oh wait. So we gotta repackage the browser five file. Okay, so we got the server response. Load up Backbone again. Go over to the About page. So that renders. We'll jump back to the Home page. So it's fetching tweets again. Uh, and there, so it rendered the tweets. Um, so that's sort of that application rendering the same code on the client and server. Um, so there's some cool stuff we can do um, once we kind of have this working that is only possible with this type of architecture. 
So I'm going to show you some of that. So one cool thing, I admittedly threw this in because I knew I was going after Alex. Um, but I baked in uh, sort of an optimistic rendering on our, on, on our checkout page. I don't know if this would necessarily be the best idea to do, but it's fast. It certainly makes the app feel fast. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy this Paella deal. Um, you go in here, complete order. So I get it uh, instantly. I could print it in theory. Um, then it asynchronously loads the rest of the deals underneath it. Um, but it, it's a really seamless experience. Um, and then the other cool trick is something that's nice and for developers. So I'm going to jump back to the home page here. So let me kind of minimize the window so you guys can see this. Um, so since we're rendering the client, we can live reload the templates when the templates change. Um, so say, for instance, I'm working on this template, and I want to add some text uh, maybe ab above this image. Um, I can go in here, and I can say, all right, uh, let's put some text here. Um, so it reloads it. Um, I say, oh, wait, I don't want it there. I'm going to move it down here. Uh, so cool, it's over there. And I'm like, all right, I actually just want to move the title up here. Cool. The title's super small. Make it bigger. All right, cool, yeah. All right, so that's how I like my UI now. So it kind of makes developing nice. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts about it. Um, so that's kind of it. Thank you.